Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to VisualBasic.net tutorial. Today we are gonna talk about the classes again and continue our last tutorial. In the last tutorial, we created uh, a class called Contact Information, and in, in that class, it ha uh, we were able to store a number of attributes related to our contact, such as name, address, and telephone, which we made public, and one of them we made private, which is notes. Okay. Also, um, also. Uh, we uh, defined uh, a number of methods, and by method I mean a subroutine to, f uh, to fold the information. One is used to fold the information directly, another one is to read the contact information using a dialog box, another one is to display the contact information in a dialog box. Okay, so given that, uh, I am upgrading this project uh, so that we can test new things and what I did is I created a new class and it is called uh, Contact list and what this one does it stores the information of a number of contact based on the um, Smaller class contact info. So this this is the code for the class here. We are defining an array of type class uh, okay, so we can store up to 1,000 contact in this class, and this will be the counter of how many item we use in in this class. Okay, next what we have is uh, a method to add a new contact. We increase the number of contact, generate the new object, and uh, and then we, we read the contact information from the display and this one is for removing contact, we pass the name and it will remove it and if you check the code of the previous tutorial you'll find it's very similar and we have full data grid view which is used to fold the, the display now we are uh, here is where it, it gets interesting with every class there is a special method okay uh, usually they call it the constructor and what this method does it allows you to do stuff uh, before you can use the class okay and what what you can do here is initialize a number of variable and prepare some kind of information so that the class or the object will be usable for you now in our case we have for example C which is the counter that tells me how many elements I use uh, uh, sorry have I used in this array and uh, basically this one should have the value of 0 so I can do the following I can just write C equals 0 now uh, when I create an object the the new method this new method will be executed directly without me having to call it okay so now first uh, gi given this code okay and uh, also by modifying the form itself okay uh, you can see the form itself, the code is very simple now we define the obj which is a, a new contact list and then we are adding a new contact, we are following the display with the contact information when we remove a contact we check if we selected anything from the display we get the name, remove the name and display it uh, sorry and refresh the display okay now let's first try this out and then I will show you where it, it gets executed so now we run here okay and contact add this one will be Smith and he's from the states and telephone 123 and contact add uh, let's choose Michael Michael and he's from Canada okay and his phone number 789 okay so so far you didn't sense anything now what we are gonna do is we will go to the contact list and we are gonna create a breakpoint right here to see when it gets executed when I run this form I can see the execution stopped 
right in here and why is that this is because if you go to form one sorry just go here you will find that I already defined it the OBJ as a new contact list and since here there's the word new it forces your application to uh, create a new object and because of that you uh, sorry uh, because of that uh, you, you, uh, the the uh, sorry because of that the computer execute the new method now we will modify it to see it more clearly we are removing this here and as you remember removing this one means obj does not point to anything and we will initialize it explicitly like this okay uh, go to the form load event if you don't see it you just uh, choose form one event and select the load from here and the load event is executed always uh, in the beginning of the execution of the uh, of the form what we do here is opj equals a new uh, contact list okay probably we might want to add a message box here a message box uh, generating a new object okay here is where we are gonna uh, get this so I am I'm running this one and I am getting this one generating a new object now here is where the actual generation of the object will be so uh, I'll go debug and step into and as you can see the execution goes to the new method go to debug again and the step in, into okay now it, it is it is defining the the array here uh, and debug step into okay now it is defining the, the, the local variable here and step into and so on okay and then the code finishes execution now I will modify it to make it more clear when you define arrays and initialize variables here they are executed uh, in a way similar to the new so what I'm gonna do is remove this one okay to make it more uh, to make it more makes more sense to you and put it here it will have exactly the same effect the dimension um, <coughs> zero sorry contact ARR zero <coughs> sorry I'm very sorry uh, okay so now the code is different we don't know how many elements in this array it's an empty array it doesn't have any element okay uh, sorry its size is is zero it cannot it cannot contain any element so now we are initializing this again and press ok and debug step into now if I check this one I can see contact array is nothing debug step into and it's still nothing and use step into again you can see C0 this one is not initialized debug um, step into and you can see now it has 1000 elements and then debug yeah so we get back to the point of the uh, of the execution here okay so this is basically what a constructor is doing it initializes or allows you 
to specify specific values and prepare some kind of processing information for your uh, for your object